Hi everyone, welcome again to Northern Zen Yoga. My name is Sandra and today I am going to talk to you about your hand plant. Placing your hands down firmly on the mat. I did a video just recently about planting the feet down. The feet are important. They are part of our standing poses and they require us to get a very firm planting on the mat in order to not move or slip or get out of balance so that we fall. But there are some postures we're going to do where we have to plant our hands down. Things like cat-cow, uh, downward facing dog is the big one. Getting our hands down firmly in a good plant is important. So one of the things you can work on at home is working on placing your hands down and spreading the fingers out and pushing into the ground. So you don't have to be going into down dog to do this. You could be on your knees or you could be just sitting like I am. And I'm going to show you, and I'm, I have this annoying thing that happens with this mat when it's, because uh, it's very thin and it's on a carpet, but I'm going to place my hands down and hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to spread my fingers out. So. When you have an opportunity, if you're sitting watching television or something like that, I want you to just work on spreading out the fingers, opening up the hands. There is a video I have on doing exercises for the hands, getting the wrists and the fingers and the joints all moving. You might want to work on those to help get some flexibility back into the joints. But working on spreading out the fingers is a very critical thing in order to be able to support yourself more correctly if you do have to put weight onto your hands. A lot of times we have difficulty with the wrists being a little bit too uh, delicate or they hurt when we put weight on them. A lot of the reason for this is because we're not putting our hands down properly. We're not letting the hands take up and spread out the weight that we're trying to get supported. So by working on spreading out the hands clenching them in, spreading them out, clenching them in. This is not unlike the footlock where we work on putting pressure down on the whole surface of the hand. So take your hand, place it onto the floor. We're not putting any weight onto it now, but we're just working on moving the fingers farther apart, just opening them up taking your thumb and moving your thumb as far away from your index finger as you can and opening up the hand and then we're going to start to press into the hand. Push into the heel of your hand and then press into the fingertips. This is part of your hand lock. So if you're having to support your weight and I'm going to move my hands forward hopefully you can see the way that my hands are um, pressed in here. So I'm just pushing into my heel first of my hand. I could lift my fingers up still. And then I'm going to press my fingers down and then I'm going to shift the weight from my torso over top of my hands. Pressing down, pressing down, pressing down. Do this and then release. Shake your hands out. Try that one more time. Spreading the fingers out planting the heel of your hand first, widening out the fingers as far as you can, shifting your weight, pressing into the fingertips as well as the heel of your hand, pressing your, the surface of your hand down into the floor. This gives you more stability into the wrist. If you're still having issues with your wrist, it could be simply because you need to start getting the wrist joint moving. But if you have a lot of pain happening into the wrist, you should look at getting wrist supports. They're like um, a tension bandage that you can wrap around the uh, wrist area. And these exercises are also great if you have issues with corporal tunnel and you haven't had a chance to get any uh, surgery or, or correction on that yet. You can perhaps even avoid surgery if you just work on your wrists, getting your hands moving and helping your hands take the brunt of the weight that you're pressing onto them. So if I go into something like Downward Facing Dog, one of the cues I always give is that I always rotate my hands so that they are slightly toward each other. You can see that in the video here. Um, instead of being this way, because then I'm crunching my elbows in, 
In this way, I'm able to get a better position of the shoulders and the elbows and the muscles. This is a little bit too exaggerated, probably more like this, in order to be able to support the weight. Because I'll tell you something, I'm sorry if my head keeps getting cut off. My shoulders, uh, this shoulder particularly, will not support weight. It has a detached collarbone, so I have a weakness in, that's inherent into the, the whole shoulder girdle. Uh, so I have to depend on my arms and my back doing the work. So getting the hands in the right position is critical for me because if I am not planted firmly down, if I'm taking all the weight onto the sides of my hands and my hands are rolling or uh, my wrist is doing too much of the work, then I have a chance of falling down or not being able to support myself in this particular uh, stretch. So let's just try that. You might want to try doing this just from the knee down position, planting your hands down, rotating them just a tiny bit toward each other, really spreading, spreading, spreading those fingers out as much as you can. Push into the heel of your hand, press your fingertips down, lift up your hips, push back slightly so that your head is starting to come between the arms and hold this as long as you're able to. If it's a breath, drop down, come back up again. If it's two breaths, come down. Doesn't really matter how long you can hold downward facing dog. I learned this lesson when I first started doing yoga. And I don't want to get off the topic. Oops, I think I'm cutting myself off a little bit too much there. I don't want to get off the topic of using the hands, but a lot of people get discouraged by downward facing dog because it is hard to hold that weight. It's hard to have that support as we get older because our shoulders have weakened and our back muscles are probably not in great shape. So just think of it as I just need to get into it. I just need to get there, hold my, maybe take a breath, hold it for about a breath, drop down on my knees, get back up again, hold it there for another complete breath, get back down again. It, that's all you have to think about. I used to be up and down and up and down and up and down. Now I could hold it, you know, for several breaths, but still I cannot hold it as long as a lot of women who have been doing yoga as long as me or less time than me because they don't have the same difficulties and physical uh, shoulder problems that I do. So don't let what other people do influence you. Don't worry about that. It's not a competition. And it's so important to remember that, that yoga is not a competition. The only thing that you're competing with, if you want to call it a competition, is what you can do today with what you can do tomorrow. That's the only thing. If you need to make it a competition, make it a competition within yourself. To move yourself forward, make it about consistency. The more I do the yoga practice, the more I practice it, the more I try, the more I look at what lessons I've learned and how to get my body into the right position, is going to move you forward. Nothing else will. Not any other, there's no other secret to it. It's just practice, practice, practice. So work on practicing on those hands. If your hands are really tight and sore, you're going to need to massage them. You're going to need to get them working. You're going to need to get them straightened out again if your fingers are curled and bent. If you've got arthritis. You can get those joints moving if you give them time and you give them some uh, massage. And if you take special medication for your arthritis, take it and then get the joints moving. Don't take it and then not move the joints. I hope this helps. I hope this will help you improve your yoga practice. Join me on my live classes. I will be starting, um, I'll have another live class on December the 17th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It'll be a yin yoga class. And then in January, in the new year, in 2021, um, we'll be having a regular Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time yoga class. It will be about uh, between 40 and minutes and an hour, depending on how carried away I get that day. So if you are able to schedule having a once a week yoga class with me, that would be fantastic too. I'd love to see you there. So that will be starting on January the 12th. At, uh, it's a Tuesday and it will be at 10 a.m. 
So put those down in your calendar, watch for them to come up on the live feed, and keep practicing. Bye for now. Have a great Christmas and a fantastic New Year. See you next time.